Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. Super excited to be talking about empowerment and clarity. We have Paris Nesva joining us on the show. Hello. Hi, Hi how are you? Thanks for coming on, Paris. Really Thank you so much. It. I'm really excited for this. We were just talking about this beforehand, but it does seem like Jun Yoon was the one that then brought us together a couple years ago at his events that he was producing. And then most recently we saw each other at the Interdependent Capitalism event. Absolutely. Which was so cool. And I'm glad that we caught on to the importance of doing the show together to talk about all these things. Absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's, it's really We're a pleasure. Honored. I love what you guys are doing here. Thank you. It's amazing. Thank you. And your support has been instrumental in helping us make this thing happen. So thank you. And for those who don't know Paris Nessa's background, she believes change first starts with yourself. And you can find the links in the bio below to Paris's work. Paris, let's start things off with one of our favorite questions to ask our guests. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? Yeah, you know, I knew you were going to ask this question, of course, you know, and I've been thinking about it. And, you know, overall, I do see it going in the right direction in terms of it has become better over the centuries, over the, over the thousands of years. You know, I'm homeschooling my kids and we're studying about Mesopotamia and, you know, and the evolution of, of uh, civilization from that region of the world. And essentially, you know, where we are today, it's, it's phenomenal the things that we're doing, the things that we're getting done, the things that we're achieving in, on a daily basis. And so I think it's incredible. And, but there are, of course, some, some things that we can obviously improve on. Uh, and, and I think that one of the most important things is not to lose sight of our humanity, of the human effect that we all have. It's easy to become uh, mechanical about our technology about the, the innovations that are happening and that we will be seeing in the, fu in the not too distant future. But that you know, there is a major part, obviously there's a major part of us who's, who's human, who a machine cannot replace. I, I, I believe that and, and, I, and I feel it. And I, and I sincerely would advocate for that humanity to continue rather than be taken over by any kind of a cyborg or uh, transhumanism, where it might go too far, for example, and things of that nature. There's a couple things. First, it's crazy that you're homeschooling your kids. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's really awesome to me. I love the idea. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of being able to help the children un, um, unpack what their purpose is in life and figure that out from a young age. And sometimes the school system can squelch the purpose rather than make it flower. And if you bring up the great point of like looking back at some of our older days, yes, at times it, there may not be the internet, um, but there were, you just spoke about these values, these human values that machines can't have. Well, back in the day, there used to be at times more of this deeper human value, spiritual connection. That's what it feels like. And today with the machines, it feels more lost. Mm. Yes and no. For example, we were, just, we were studying Mesopotamia and, and how the language, the language that we are, we are using today was first evolved. And, um, and it was through uh, that particular region that uh, they created conifers if I'm pronouncing that right. English is my second language, everybody, but still, I'm still working on it. So uh, you can correct me if, I, if, if I'm wrong. But anyway, it was evolved then. And, and you know, there, the, the, um, the rules that were made by the, the then king and to, as to the behavior, human interactions and behaviors, they are pretty tough. And, and just recently, in the past 100 years, we've been able to translate that language that was, that was carved in stone thousands of years ago to now understand what it was what it had said and the, the rules and the laws that were made are pretty pretty steep where you lose a finger you lose a hand if you know if you should happen to you know misjudge or, or I mean just or sure. happen to you know look someone the wrong way or, or touch someone's child I mean, it's just really very steep so okay. based on yeah. that kind of a legal system and, and societal laws, I would say we're much better off right now. Balanced with being able to actually see the stars, no light pollution, actually gardening one's, oneself or actually working with uh, precious resources of the planet oneself versus just walking into the grocery store, walking into the super, the, the, the super centers. 
yeah, well, these types of things. Well, that's just it. I think the fact that any human being can realize the tremendous power that we have that is at our fingertips today and make best of it and make the most of it, we would have, any human being would have lived, will live thousands, li thousands of lives within their 100 year lifespan because we are capable of um, creating so much uh, now than we were even 50 years ago, right? Uh, I mean, there's so many different references that I, that the, in my short lifespan I, I can come up with and that, that did not, I couldn't even have access to, you know, 20 years ago and I would, would die for and I didn't even know existed. Whereas now all I have to do obviously is write, Google it, uh, you know, and, you know, add it. But I do agree where in the past you might have asked a friend. In the past, you might have gone to the library. You might have gone through more effort. There would have been more human touches, you know, more, yeah. more, more interactions, right, on a human level uh, to uncover, you know, your research, your, your, your field of study, um, your, your company, uh, you, you, uh, any kind of development that you were doing. Whereas now it is available electronically. I can see where the concern can rise. I think the most concern is really in the young. The yeah. young are at, at, in the worst position at this point where we are, um, where they are being given these incredible machines and they are sort of, at, you know, depending on the parental um, guidance, some are being left alone with them and so, you know, there's different levels, right? And some are given some guidance, some are given some parameters and so on. So I think the most vulnerable are, are young. Um, whereas the elders, you know, I'm, I'm an elder right now, it feels, so I know how to use this stuff to my benefit. And, and somebody who's, you know, somebody younger than me, that they, they know how to use this stuff to their benefit, right? But definitely not the tens, definitely not even the teens, I feel. Um, yeah, so there, I feel that there needs to be a lot more development in terms of educating our children as to how to best use technology uh, for the benefits. And schools, you know, they don't do this very well. They try. They, I know I used to, uh, from our local school program, they really tried. And uh, my daughter was enrolled in a parochial school before a public school system. And they didn't even address technology. You know, the computers were still in one room. And they still had, you know, computer time like the way I had when I was in college. So I felt that that was pretty removed. You know, I didn't like that. And then we came into a public school system where everything is open, carte blanche. You know, you've got the internet, go use it. Now you have Google Classroom. All of a sudden my daughter was able to email her friend's mom, <laughs> you know, to ask for a play date. And I didn't even know about it until after the fact that the mom then responded to me and said, oh, you know, your, your daughter reached out and she, Oh really? Yeah. I had no idea, you know. And so there was no, um, very little guidance given to the children. I mean, we experienced this firsthand as to, well, <clears throat> what do you use this for, right? Yeah. And how do you best use it, and what are the limitations? You know, um, Fair. The, right? That's a good example of it being used for purposes of trying to schedule a play date, cool stuff. And <laughs> there's also uh, the prior to these last couple of decades of the proliferation of the technology into our pockets, uh, to have a hundred billion humans prior to us figure themselves out through their own uh, trajectories of life experience versus now, if you don't really know who you are when you're 12 or 14 or 18, mm. there's algorithms that have been crunching billions of psychometric profiles that are feeding you pieces of information that are trying to swing your perspective in directions that may align with their own ethos and not your, our own. Yeah. So there's some major issues that are also arising yep. from the business models that they have. And so it's like this, you gave a great example, you know, reaching out for a play date, um, emailing the mom, cool. Um, but yeah to, yeah. yeah, to also put the power of the tech into the kids' hands to be manipulated is, we don't even know that we're building the tools that are then manipulating us. And so we have to be extremely vigilant with the way that we design it with the ethics and philosophy and morality exactly. and these types of things. And we're not plugging 
we haven't plugged those things into Silicon Valley yeah. since day one. They've been gone. It was yeah. just engineers and designers and ops people since day mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And the philosophy and ethics and morals were like people sh shouting from across the world, like, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. And now it's like, well, maybe we should have a couple of them that are on our staff. And then they get in there and they're mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, we're, there's no spiritual connection here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a void of spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and so those, and what leaks into the voids of spiritual connection is malevolence, unknowing ma malevolence and mm -hmm. ignorance, unknowingly. Mm -hmm. And we don't like to think of these brilliant programmers as people that are ignorant, but mm -hmm. when one has never felt unbounded wholeness, when one has never felt source or mother, the spirit that exists among us all, mm -hmm. and it's just a constant in the head programming, <laughs> we're, we're, we're puppets in a sense for, so there's, there's a lot of nuance there, and I think we're well, going to hit on this throughout well, a little bit more. Definitely. Okay. Let's do. Yeah. So let's do the journey. So this was cool. You were teaching me that you were born in Iran, and then that's actually very close to Armenia. We're very in the same yes. area of the world. Neighbors. Neighbors. And so what was that like for you growing up? Because that was obviously much prior to, to, you know, to my... Ex I actually was never even... You know, I was born in the United States. I only went back... Yeah most recently um two years ago and going back i mean it was beautiful but it's also like there's a different pace of time there's a different completely different culture uh so yeah different fa different values of families and neighbors and community and so yeah so tell us about it absolutely you know i loved growing up in iran i it was such a peaceful and um loving environment uh that i remember obviously very modern at the time and um, you know I the environment was such that I remember it be a, there was so much love and so much unity among our family members and this is not just our family members it was it's these are the family values that are that exists in that part of the world and I don't know to what degree today I will be honest and frank with you because that has somewhat changed um, but back then, it was much more um, stronger, solid. Families st stayed together and supported each other. They had each other's back. Um, you know, multiple generations uh, lived close together. Um, of course, you know, yeah. we also um, traveled to different cities to see family and, and relatives. But I remember that, that the love was so intense that that's when I experienced one of my first epiphanies at age of four. Whoa. And it, stick, it stayed with me throughout my entire life. And to today, it still drives me. I felt, I, I will never forget the day that, that this happened. It was, uh, we were bicycling in our um, famous street in front of our home. We had this beautiful villa. My dad uh, was a, uh, he was into manufacturing. He created one of the first manufacturing uh, uh, plants to um, convert wheat to flour in, in the province. And then he later multiplied them, you know, throughout the country, and he, he produced at one point top 10 percent of the of, of the of the gross production of, of flour uh, in, in you know in, in, in Iran. Wow. But in any event, so I remember the incredible love as I was bicycling with a whole bunch of other friends. You know, complete trust, right? There's no come back home at a certain time. It's complete trust, and I. And I experienced this incredible expansion and unity, unity. It was a felt hardcore body right there. And I saw it, it was as if I was in a dream, but it was clearly not because I was very much awake. And the love and the unity and the, the, the lack of barriers that I felt between myself and my fellow human Whoa. was such an incredible experience that yeah. stay, still stayed with me. At four. I, at four. That's cool. Why? Well, and I was also so eager to learn that my mom couldn't hold me back. I was the youngest of four, and she enrolled me in into kindergarten at four, and uh, uh, yes, kindergarten at four. So I was I went to first grade at five, and I loved I loved loved learning, um, and and then it also didn't uh, it was also helpful to know who the principals were and so on and so forth. It was a small city, and so everybody knew each other. Um, and so they made some adjustments to get me in because mom just didn't want to hear me anymore, you know, having to beg her to go to school and learn. But anyway, um, so it was a very supportive environment. Loved, loved Iran. I miss the country. And so we left 
um, when I was 11 to come to San Francisco to visit my brother who had uh, come here earlier, several years earlier. We left in 77 and my father you know, decided that we wanted to go and see him for the summer vacation. So we all packed and we came straight to the SF. It was beautiful and, and after a few months my dad decided this is an amazing place and you know what, we're moving and we're going to have the, uh, the rest of the family move here as well. And uh, so then of course he broke the news to the rest of us and, and the, even though we had a democratic family where my dad really liked to involve the children in the decision making, but that particular decision making I remember I was not involved in. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty much way made for us. Yeah. And so luckily, I mean I, I love that. Of course, you know, here you are 11 and you know, you're, you're in a completely different world. I spoke English to some degree but clearly not fluent. So I had to learn English quickly. And then I was, next thing I knew, I was enrolled in school and, and, and going to- Wow, uh, what a pivot yeah. in life trajectory. It was and huge. Your father was kind of, like you said, just in a sense, just made that pivot for you and the children. Uh, that's, yeah. And thankfully, because you know, and then in retrospect, we, we often asked him, did you know that there was going to be a revolution? Did you know that there was going to be change? Because two years later, in '79, there was the um, you know uh, the hostage crisis and the Shah left the country and so on and so forth, and all that change occurred. And you know, and he since the, the there he he had his hand into the business world and into trade, and it wasn't just on a small scale; it was on a large scale. He had realized there's some things that are just not going right that there are some things that are uh, not quite connecting. And he, he didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but he did realize that there were some things that were not going the right direction in terms of the country and the regime. So his gut, he went with his gut, and he decided for us to stay. And that was the most incredible decision. I constantly thank him. You know, there's not really a day that I go by that I don't remember that, and I don't wow. thank the fact that we are here in the United States. I love this country. I'm, I'm an American citizen, and um, you know, I though I love Iran as well uh, in terms of the what we left behind. But it's not the same world as it was obviously back then. Um, and we loved Iran too. We do. We, oh. yeah. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> it's very important that uh, we need to look for each other. Definitely, and you know. The Iranian people as well, I'm sure you know this, uh, you know, in Iran, they, they completely, they love Americans, you know, and of course it's the regime and, and the politics that's, the, um, that's the, 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 the difference and that's creating a, a, a gap. I between. think most of us love each other. That's true. From all the different countries. Yes. Just the regular yeah. person, the regular exactly. Joe, wants to get cultured, wants to learn more about these other cultures. But I, don't, I have to be careful because they'll, you know, they'll assassinate me, this uh, <laughs> global yeah, government. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a really good point. So being a, be, having been born in a different country and migrating here, um, you know, we, re we realize quickly that obviously we're not the only ones. And then you look around and you see people from all over the world coming to the United States. And you see how it was it, the experience that I had um, within me and the questions that came up for me as a, on a human level, you know, um, clearly well, that has defined me. And, and, I th and I'm grateful for that. I think migrating and changing one's environment, you know, whether you're, you want to relocate, move, uh, whether you want to um, you know, experience a different culture across the world, you've got to do it. I really, I highly encourage uh, people to do so because it gives such an incredible perspective into not only how you, one yourself adjusts to this new environment, whatever it might be, new language, new food, yep. new people, new characters, new culture, but also um, you see how other people are, are living the same exact 24 hour day that you do on the other side, wherever you might have been, and how they are living it. And, and, then, and then you see the interactions that you have with them. And then you soon realize that we are not so different. Mm -hmm. you know, that the gap is, there is really no gap. And that it is perceived, and, it, and that it is based on so many other factors 
that are not humanistic. You know, it's, it has to do with uh, econ economy, obviously. It has to do with politics and so on. So, but anyway. Yeah. This is a um, very critical point, and I'm glad that we're, um, attack, uh, we're talking about travel with the lens that we are um, when we have this global mentality about the way that we can maximize our collective prosperity. I think one of the most important keys to that is this travel. Let's do um, the picking up of the interests as well. So as you move then, you locate to San Francisco where, you know, for the last 40 plus years being here in the Bay Area is kind of nuts. Um, seeing what's happened yes. in Silicon Valley. Um, this is completely different than being in kind of like rural Nebraska for 40 <laughs> years because not much changes in rural yep. Nebraska for 40 years. So like, what has it been like being here? How did you pick up your interests growing up in this area? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. That's amazing. You know, um, I, when we moved here, we moved right here to, to San Francisco directly. Um, there's an area called uh, Park Merced. It's right next yeah. to San Francisco State. And so we, my brother had an apartment there, so we lived there uh, for about nine months. And my father quickly um, got involved and he purchased a house that was half built. And then we waited for it to be fully built before we moved in into the peninsula. And so and then that, that transition in the, uh, into the school system was huge. I was faced with bullying, you know, right off, right off the bat. You know, soon the hostage crisis occurred. And here I am taking the school bus in the morning, you know, in a very nice neighborhood, you know, we were in Hillsborough. And, you know, and then you have kids that I still know today that, by the way, we attend our reunion, um, you know, uh, junior high reunion and high school reunion, you know, screaming at me in the bus, you know, death to the Shah, death to the Shah, you know, or, you know, uh, there were some other slogans that, that were used. And, you know, Damn. I have to tell you, though, I'm so grateful I, my character, I mean, I, I've, you ask yourself, you know, we, we ask ourselves throughout our lives about who we are and so forth, so on and so forth. I'm so grateful that I've, I've had a cheery life, you know, I, and I think I see life in a, in a, in a, in a very positive way. And the cheer, cheer in me, and if you will, if that's I, that's I have lack of a better word, has saved me. You know, I saw that, but it, you know, I didn't, I never allowed it to go into my heart. I never allowed it to penetrate to the point where it would block me, you know, or hurt me to the point where I would be isolated or I would feel, you know, disempowered or anything as such. So I, I you know, I realized that it was the times, and but I'm also, but I also feel that aspect of what I saw helps me feel for children and adults that that do go through uh, bullying of any sort uh, or uh, minimization of any sort that minimizes their capacity as a full human being, whether they might be, uh, you know, as women, um, you know, as, uh, as LGBT community, whether it could be in any particular kind of a, a minority group. You know, I mean, I see that, I feel that, and I'm so grateful that I had that experience because it is, it is such a limited perspective of who, are, who we are. And, but it also dovetails, dovetails on the fact that the monkey mind, right? The monkey mind that we learn that, you know, you watch something on TV and it transpires to you, right? And especially if you're younger, and I see so older folks too, you know, transpires to one, whether it's positive or negative, whatever that influence is, which goes back to your conversation about how we have this sort of a prearranged, uh, you know, um, media, right? That comes at us at a, at a very precise and precise, um, uh, with precision, right? And, and that sort of a feedback that you receive, it, it, I think that us as humans need to truly elevate our understanding of who we are and really realize that we have free will. That we, yes, we see this stuff, but we have to really decide on our own whether we want to react, right? To the stimulus, to the news, to the to the um, you know interactions or to the to the marketing gimmick, whatever it might be that that we are receiving you know, these messages. So you have to realize, and this is why again I, I go back to education, not just for kids and really for everyone, for all of us to realize that we have that free will, we have that free choice. You know, is it a simulation? You know, go back to that. You know, I mean, you know, so 
are we, you know, are we just, you know, within this, this simulation where, you know, it's, everything is supposed to happen a certain way or, um, you know, it's, it's predetermined. I mean, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of different conversations. I still say we have free will. It might be a simulation to a certain degree and level, but we still have a free will to step out of it, to step out of it and to, to act upon our own understanding and to ask our own questions, right? That's where the empowerment is. That's where the, um, that's where the freedom is that we so want as human beings. You know, um, I've experienced this so much in, throughout my life, so you had questioned, going back to your question, being raised here, I mean, you couldn't come to a more diverse place in the world, it's a melting right? Melting pot, yeah. In San Francisco, yeah. and back in back when we had arrived, I think Harvey Milk was the mayor of San Francisco, and I I know now, you know, in, re in, in retrospect, but I did not know then, um, growing up here at the time. Uh, but you know, and there was a lot of uh, issues, right? Clearly, he got shot and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And there was a lot of issues about that, about the gay lesbian. Um, community and their rights. And I, I, I also questioned that. You know, I also, in myself, wondered about rights, not just as a, as my, as a woman, but as a human being and as, a, as somebody who wants to love someone else. You know, and you know, who am I to say? Who are we to say, right? And to, to, to condemn and judge another human being based on the way that they choose to love. And I remember, so I remember um, studying, of course, you know, as you go, I, so I went to Crocker, and then after that I went to Aragon uh, High School, and, and the same people that, that made fun of me in the bus were, and became my friends, and then, you know, mm. we evolved together, and it was, it's, it, and I have to tell you, I had, I felt like the entire, entire high school was my friends. I didn't have any particular group that I hung out with, though I did have some really good friends. That I um, that I still cherish the friendship with now, but you know I have to also say that living here, I felt and I don't know maybe I, tell me if you hear this from other people I felt this osmosis. You know, I felt like as if I I am constantly being fed, or I'm receiving information. You know I I, I felt like as I'm a, I'm a receiver and I'm receiving information on different levels, and um, the information then I would see it come to fruition through other channels. You know, through, Definitely. Right? Yeah. And whether it was, oh, this company is now popping up, and oh, I had that idea, you know? <laughs> or, or, you know, th this, this thought of, um, you know, unity, or this thought of, you know, knowing that, for example, I have to tell you, you know, Gavin Newsom, when he was, uh, he was the mayor of San Francisco, I was uh, doing some programming at Commonwealth Club, and uh, I so much wanted to meet with him in person, and it didn't. It did. It did not occur, unfortunately. But but that's okay. The point is that I knew in my heart, and probably so many other people, that he was going to become the governor. I just kind of know that, and and so many other so many other examples. And it and it brought the question to me that of environment, the environment that we live in, and the clarity. Of, of ourselves, you know, to be able to receive this kind of information. And, and then the, 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 the seeker within the human, you know, that, that exists within all of us. And, and I, I, I know for a fact that all of us have these things. It's not one specific person that is an you know, incredible genius. And th of course there are. But that what blocks it, and as I've realized throughout this time, is that, you know, Things like fear, right? Greed, um, uh, lies, things like um, uh, you name it, jealousy. Yeah, these basic emotions block the, it sort of the take channel. our body that is aligned, mm -hmm. and it kind of yeah takes you out of whack. Out of the divine alignment with your purpose or your mission, and unity, these types of things. How do you vaccinate yourself against the twisting? Exactly. So I had that same question. These are great questions you have asked, and you've been asking the same thing. So I've dug into this. There are ways that you can, uh, lack of a better word, protect, but really understand 
you know, I, I, I try to dig as deep as I can, understand why it happens and how you can sort of, as you say, vaccinate yourself is, you know, one, A, seek the knowledge, right? Get to know yourself mm -hmm. and get to know your own buttons, right? Yeah. What triggers you? Yeah. You know, what, what is the cause of the fear that you might, I mean, some people are petrified of spiders. You know, I've in, in. Or the other side of the political spectrum. Or the other side of the political spectrum, yeah. <laughs> Where'd that come from? I know, exactly. What about spiders? Because <laughs> spiders is probably like less than a percent of people, but the other side of the political spectrum is like 25% of thank people. Thank you for That's, that interjection. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. Just so, you know, to be able to know yourself to the point that understand that we, are, we, are, we were brought up in a certain family setting, we were brought up in a certain environment that had everything to do with how we think and has everything to do with how we behave. You know, and, and that question, and this question was also a question for me, what percentage, what percentage are we DNA, right? What percentage are we, of our behavior is environmental? Yeah. And you know, I have to tell you, the majority of it is environment. Majority, yes, you have certain DNA, but you, at the same time, the majority of what sort of steers you, you know, this DNA, this, this sort of a pure being, the, the steering is the environment. And so you've got to know your own manual. You have to know your yeah. own manual. Yeah. Who are you? You know, and why, why are you doing what you're doing? What are you here for? There is, you know, I've asked myself, is there really a purpose, right? Is there really a purpose, a common purpose for all of us? Is there a personal purpose? You know, but these are, you know, very deep questions, right? And the question and the answers wouldn't come right away. But if you'd stay with it long enough, it will come. And so I realized at this point in my life, finally, I'm a half a century old, and I'm proud to say it, I have, you know, I have no problem saying my age, where some women might, you know, I might hear from my friends later, why did you tell your age? But it doesn't matter. But the point is that I'm grateful because half a century has taken me to come to the point of stillness and to the point of yeah. resolve. Yeah. You know, it's, it's incredible. It's a celebration. It is a celebration. Some, a lot of people apparently pass without getting to that point. And that's unfortunate that we've made a world where that happens and that people aren't able to commune with the infinite and mm. achieve their divine purpose, figure themselves out their own OS, their own manual within even the first 25 years of their life. Children should be figuring it out faster. We should be facilitating the social fabric to help children figure that out faster. Definitely. Definitely, I, that 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 is that that would be a, a, an incredible goal. That would be yeah. the. I mean, you would think that that's what the education system it tries to do. You know, not really. Yes, to some degree, I think it they do. The education yeah. system does help little one bit, understand the environment that we have stepped into. You yeah. know, but it also mm -hmm. has the ability to form and shape the thoughts, right, of those individuals, depending on what part of the United States did you go to, you know, high school, right, and what, what kind of a um, curriculum was given to you. But it, I think that at the, at the end, it's the objective mind. You know, you have to always go back to the objective mind. And that is the sort of the highlight, I feel, that, that we need to, um, that I'd like to help people realize that, yes, you might be in a certain environment, right, and certain environments are really not that great, right? For whatever reason, and um, that you might, some people might have been born into it, some people might have been, got, um, have, have gotten into that particular path. Um, and I'll tell, say this as an example, my brothers, um, they were, uh, uh, they, they had, led, you know, led interesting lives. And anyway, I can go into detail about that, but, not to digress, so I feel that um, in whole... We should talk is, about that. Oh, would you like to? Well, that leads us into us being in charge of our own destiny, which we were just talking about, mental health yeah. issues. Yeah. I yeah. mean, because we're talking of now, again, so many people are experiencing issues with mental health across, especially the developing world, and so many of the ancient wisdoms that have been lost 
are speak about things like we just had Phil Borges on the show talking about Crazy Wise film, things like the sh divine rituals and, and shamanic practices of yeah. the indigenous and versus now just drugging ourselves with pharmaceuticals. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah. We're, we're way misaligned with nature. Um, and it almost seems like there's something dark that's keeping that ignorance and malevolence there yeah. purposely instead of that connection of the divine. Well, you know, it's interesting. So medicine, you know, the, the, um, the sign, if you look at the American Medical Association, the, I don't know if you know the, the sign Is that kind of spirals. Is it a double helix over across the yes, staff? Yes, the staff and then the wings. Yeah. So that sign uh, originated thousands of years ago. From the pineal gland, was it? Or the pine cone was at the top or something like that? Yeah. Something interesting like well, that. Well, that sign yeah. it goes, you know, so I studied the chakra system and I have also, I'm also a meditation teacher. And while I was stu uh, studying this, we came across the sign and uh, we studied it. Well, so apparently this sign has been taken from an, an ancient tradition and it's, it's, a, it's a known fact. And basically, it, is, it describes the body. Mm. The staff is the body, mm -hmm. the spine. Spine, yep. And these spirals are two snakes. Yes. That spiral in between the, the chakras. Yeah. The chakras. And the chakras are also equivalent to certain glands in the body that, are, uh, that equate to the endocrine system. Mm -hmm. So it, it intertwines these, these chakras. And then it, the wings are at the center the heart where earth meets heaven, thus wings to fly into the heaven sphere. Mm -hmm. And then from the heart, the center the, where the wings are, and then, and then uh, onto you know, consciousness, achieving yeah. uh, the uh, consciousness level of, uh, of uh, awakening and the, and the full spectrum of uh, the lotus. That's cool. So that is the, that's our medic, medical basis is incredible. You know, the medicines that we're able to create actually in the pharmaceutical companies and what we're able to do is phenomenal. I mean, the, that is phenomenal. On the most positive, On the most benevolent positive. end, it's supposed to help us with yes. our scent. However, it is, it can be misused. Right? There Rampantly are self-dealing. Absolutely. Yeah. This is what I mean in terms of of staying objective and, and staying true to oneself and knowing that we can, anyone, I remember one of my teachers used to say, uh, Paris, you're, you can, you're in danger of getting off the path at any given time. And I used to think, this was my meditation teacher, uh, which I highly respect. And it's really helped me uh, um, realize quite a lot uh, personally in my life. And so I'm grateful for that. But he said that he would continuously say this, and I was I used to dismiss it. <laughs> you know, it was, I felt it was a scare tactic, you know. But now I realize what, what he's meaning, because it is true. If you, if you lose your, the sense of yourself, you know, he also used to say that you need to hang on to your rope. Mm -hmm. And the rope inside, within, mm -hmm. who you are, you've got to hang on to that. There will be tough times in life. There will, be, there will be times that you will get challenged. There will be times that you might have to take these medicines, right? And that the medication might take over the body. But you've got to, under all circumstances, hang on to, your, to yourself, yeah. hang on to your path, and not lose sight of that. Because yeah. you could, once you do, that's when... You're knocked over. Yeah. That's when you you know you go off track. That's when you veer off. That's where accidents happen. That's where problems occur. And sometimes they happen maybe to a high degree where that person might have a hard time getting back. Yeah. Right. Yep. Then you. That's then a test got, of faith. That's, that's a, a challenge. Test, huge. And then you yep. have the intervention world. You know, coming in, stepping in, wanting to do interventions, wanting to do um, some kind of a you know saving, healing, which is all wonderful. But the missing link is that person, that person inside, that objectivity, that human being, that soul has to agree, has to want, has to have that, 
that, that way back, if they're so far gone, regardless of what anybody does on the outside, yeah. they may not get back on track. I mean, I, I don't want to be a That's fatalist. Huge. You're right, you're but right. But at the same time, I have to say, for, I've learned this from experience, and I say this from firsthand. My brothers were both, um, my oldest brother had a drug addiction that had somehow worked itself into his life at an early age. And it was a horrible thing for him and for our family. It was awful witnessing all that. And, want, and seeing that how much he really wanted to make the, make the change and the transition but, and how difficult it was to do so. And as soon as something would go wrong or not his way, he would be back on you know, using drugs. And, but the point is that that was one incident. My, my second brother was, a, was someone who was incredibly healthy. He stayed away from anything that, was, that could possibly um, hurt him. He was, he was an athlete. He was a um, he was, he was, he was black diamond skier, um, you know, snow, snowboarder, I mean, you know, water skier. He taught me everything about the outdoors. You know, I loved to camp. He was an electrical engineer. He, he played the guitar. He sang. I mean, he was just like, you know, this creative human being. And he was misdiagnosed with depression. And here comes medications to help him get better. Well, guess what? It never got better. And one more, and then one more, and let's take this for that side effect, and let's take that for this side. And this is in the 80s, where mental health wasn't really talked about very much. And Meanwhile, there's a nice little bribe coming under the table for each one of the medicines that's being prescribed. And nobody knew. We had no idea. You know, my father was, you know, what was, you know, he believed in doctors. He believed that he, you know, it wasn't his profession, right? So he would leave it up to the other experts to help. And same with my mother, you know, and so they had to trust. Well, what else are they going to do? But then soon they realized Stay that this skeptical. stuff. skeptical. This is one of those lessons, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that yeah. was a lesson for me as a yeah. child watching this unfold. Yeah. It was a huge, huge life lesson. I'm grateful and for. And now you won't repeat that with your kids. Absolutely said, not. Yeah. Or with myself. I was very cautious with and myself. Help and help remind your friends of that too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so you can then take the knowledge and run horizontal with it after you've experienced it vertically through your own family over time. You can then share it with other families. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I am so looking forward to doing more of that Yeah. because the, there is so much trust that's put into, um, I mean, like, again, I don't, I don't feel that we should not trust. Trust is a great thing, yeah. but it's good to also have healthy skepticism. Yep. You know, and I learned that in my audit career at PwC. You know, you were an auditor, you audited, right, financial statements, but with a skepticism. We weren't suspicious that things were going to go wrong or that, you know, the, 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 there's misstatements or that, you know, the, the books are, are accounted for in a wrong way, but that you looked at it with objectivity that something could be out of whack. You know, so that kind of a point of view is imperative, yep. you know, right? Yep. And so um, the, the medication world, I think, is great. But at the same time, it is so filled with so many side effects and so many overlaps. And that I, on, I, don't, I won't speak for the doctors, but I, we yeah. really need companies. We really need um, innovation. I mean, just some simple apps that can help us see the, the side effects. You know, does this really work with that? You know, there are a few, but there aren't enough on a large enough scale where we can just you know, use it at our, at our fingertips, right? Um, you know, so that kind of a thing would be wonderful for, for humanity, you know, for us to A full elevate. simulation, a full digital twin of Paris Nessa, and then you can simulate what it's like adding a little pharmaceutical to your entire body state and seeing what it does. Exactly, and along those lines, you know, medication is, is great, but I also have to, I have my personal philosophy is short term. If it's a long term medication, you have to really look into what's going on with the body, what's going on with the, on the emotional level, hence the chakra system that I've studied, and that there's a, there's a system in the body that has, um, that has emotions, 
you know, we have our emotional mind, you know, right? Psychology is all about the emotional mind and so on and so forth. Well, there's emotions that we hold and literally inside of our body. And though it cannot be proven, you know, we can't say, oh, this is the gland. The right body there. holds the score. Yeah. The body holds the score yeah. and it has memory, right? Yeah. Body, muscle, memory. We talk about this in athletics. Yeah, in yeah. athletics. So the body holds these memories from way back when we don't even remember, right? So yeah. most of the equations, occasions that have occurred to us, but did we have, we have some kind of a phobia or we have some kind of a fear or certain kind of looks or certain kinds of appearances, certain environments make us, you know, might feel, make us feel uncomfortable. Well, guess what? Those are the, the body's ways of telling you that you need to look further into certain areas, whatever the, the cue is. Rather than run away from it, it's the exact opposite. You know, it's, it's like, oh, it's an invitation. The body is trying to talk. How else is the body going to tell you? Yeah. You know, you've got, this is what I mean in terms of our own manual, manual and learning our own, um, learning about ourselves. Because the body is incredible. It's very wise, right? Yeah. And, you know, we're natural leaders. 30, I was looking this up earlier, 37 trillion cells in each human body. And I think it's, we're still counting. That's, that's, Mind-blowing, mm -hmm. isn't yeah. it, right? Yeah. And who's in charge of that? What you put inside of yourself is pretty much in charge of that. What you surround yourself with is in charge of that. So you'll have a direct effect on all of, the, all of your body, all of the cells in your body, all the organs. But depending on what you take in, what stimuli from your environment you take in, what food, nutrition, pharmaceuticals, all the stuff they eat. That you take in. Exactly. There are two things that we can do that I've discovered that can help clear and flush in a way. Food, and food I mean food that's, that's healthy for the body, and exercise. Yep. These are like two very basic stuff. And Super the more basic. I, you're right. The yeah. more you research longevity, the more you research. Health. Sleep's a good one for. Sleep is excellent. For decreasing inflammation. Yes. Helping you with. Uh, betterly better integration of your of the day with the previous life existence but processing processing it, yeah, yeah. It processes and kind of takes everything and puts it into order Process, organizes puts it into order yeah right that's great yeah and then you get up the next morning fresh right super simple ones yeah and that's it exactly super simple now Occam's razor is a really this is Occam's razor at its finest just the most simple ways of living a healthy life are likely the most optimal so eat in ways that feel really good for you and sleep really well, exercise really well, and you'll likely feel great day to day and, exactly. and be able to get through some of those things that can stress, can give us stress or anxiety or reliance on exogenous substances to make us feel divine, all these types of things. Precise. Yeah, exogenous. Exactly. So, yeah, versus endogenous are things found within <laughs> you. Exogenous is when you seek things outside of you to try and word. get yourself to... And yeah, you, you want to be endogenously motivated too, <laughs> because if you're endogenously yes. motivated to achieve a divine goal, you'll find yourself less ego-driven, less money-driven, less fame-driven, mm. and more purpose-driven. Yes. But whenever it's for things outside of mm -hmm. you that you're driven for, mm -hmm. you'll you never find satisfaction. Exactly. Um, and you, people can smell that on you. They can mm -hmm. smell when you're like. Of right. buying your next watch and buying your next thing yep. versus they can tell when you're you know truly living a humble existence mm -hmm. meanwhile you're doing really big things for the world and you'll gravitate other people towards you mm -hmm. um, yeah that's beautiful absolutely I mean you know we're intelligent right humans are incredibly intelligent beings and, the fact and that also very no, 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 all of us. Yes. <laughs> but that's what I mean. No, I think this the food, is you know, I, I'm going to let you run with that for a second if you yeah. want. But you know, but the food that we eat, right? And you guys, I, I'm still serious about this. Really, we are in charge of not ourselves. all of us. Uh, no, yeah, not all I of can't us. let you get away with that. <laughs> We're some of us are very smart, and some of us are not. To be polite. <laughs> There's, okay. There's an All ignorance right. among us. There is an ignorance among us, yeah. Well, the ignorance is not seeking. The ignorance is also not... Um, the ignorance is within all of us. It's just different levels of ignorance. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, we know that we know so little. Um, yes. Yeah. 
Definitely. Yeah, Dunning-Kruger effect. It's a great one. There's yeah. a lot among us that don't know anything, but and they think, think they, they know do. it all. <laughs> and, 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 and that's so, the problem. They're so loud. They're so yeah, loud. It. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Should, well, that, those that's kinds of extremes one. are needed, though. I have to tell you. I mean, you know, because I was reading about this um, this new inno innovation, or, or, or actually. Uh, um, it's called uh, a new way of, of, of helping to better our lives by, 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 um, by tweaking our brain into not feeling... Neuromodulation? I think so, that's, okay. thank you. Where you don't feel pain, suffering, you know, all the awful things that, that can happen yeah, in yeah. life. Right? Non-invasively, so like through ultrasound or through like optogenetics through your eyes, things like that. Through light, well, using light or using ultrasound, et cetera. However way that may Elec be. Magnetic stimulation, electrical stimulation, and yeah. things that are transcranial, just to not scare people yet. Yeah. Because we're not towards, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but that guy. <laughs> yes, yes. But, but I think that's, I mean, I think that's a noble, I understand where that comes it from. It can it's also a, accidentally fry us, yeah. It can accidentally <laughs> fry you totally. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Like we fry so many rats in these exper experiments yeah. all the time. Unfortunate. Mice, chicken, cows, pigs, the most unfortunate Aww. species on we, the planet right now. Absolutely, absolutely. <sighs> I'm glad I'm not a mouse, huh? I'm glad I'm not one of those animals being tested upon, that's for sure. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it? Yeah, Rick Paris says that, you know, we can't incarnate into an animal. It's like human is the highest form of evolution. And I respectfully disagree. I think it's an open game. The only way we're going to understand uh, not to destroy and kill these animals is to be one. And the blip of a lifetime. Well, you know, I mean, I think virtual reality can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever know? it takes. Throw on the VR headset yeah. and, and throw them in a pool so they can <laughs> feel like being a dolphin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so move, make them go at like 20 miles an hour oh, in the water. I want the full dolphin experience. <laughs> or a peacock. Oh. It's all short, you know. Beautiful. You know, I, that's just it, to put yourself into something else's or someone else's position, you know, and that's yeah. the empathy. You know, Massive that, that perspective, really yeah. get behind those eyes. Yeah, because then you can, yeah, if you feel like you're um, a mouse that's being, oh, why don't we try this new transcranial stimulation technique on you? <laughs> and then it's like, ah! <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, we, maybe we should chill out with, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I, mean, I you know, you wouldn't even know what that means, right? And you, what in the world are you doing? There's so many different, you know, ways that we humans harm each other, unfortunately, right? And and some intentionally and some unintentionally. And I go back to the family. The family unit is the first unit that you come into, right, as a human being. And the family unit is is such a integral and important part of our lives. Um, but that also we we will be you know most all of us will become defined by that. But then to know that you are that you're still free to step out of it, right, and to realize you know because we've got our, our free mind to realize right and from the wrong. You know I mean it's hurting someone it hurts. You know it's painful. That's not good, right? I mean you know just our basic sense of wisdom that we we're all equipped with. I hope well, you guys might say us mm. otherwise from your conversations, but um, you know that kind of a ability to to then judge in a healthy way that is something that needs to continue to you know be developed and nourished and know that you're not confined by the family you know that you might be you know one was born in, in a family and raised by a family and that's all wonderful, but if it were not so optimal that there are many choices outside of that. Uh, whereas I think that unfortunately not enough people, people realize that, you know, we have suicides, right? Teenage suicides are all-time high. 
um, you know, in, in even in pop stars. You know, I mean, and I mean, Robin Williams. I mean, the point is that to be able to know that there is a different life, right? Different way of living yeah. and to be able to access it. Yeah. That's the beauty of where, where we are today, that you can access it that there is information that you can connect to someone else across the world, right? Yeah. Someone else in another country. You, mean, you don't even have to speak their language anymore. You know, Google Translate for the most part. It's not perfect, but still, right? So anyway, the point is that um, this is exciting. We are in an exciting time in our lives. You know, I, when you're more immersed in nature in the days of more tribal indigenous days, it, om it does almost feel like there was a deeper <clears throat> ability to get behind the eyes of others or get behind the eyes of plants or animals or anything else that was outside of the eye. And then so many of the things, especially with the uproar of the West, which did well in many ways with this eye, of course, at the same time took us so far away from getting behind the eyes of other people mm -hmm. and plants and animals and the planet and so many of the other integral components to the unity feeling. So when the ego is uproaring and the eye is uproaring. Meanwhile, the mentality of being able to get behind the perspective of others is all these different unique combinations of humans that are in all their parts of the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're just so stuck in and sometimes twisted we're stuck and twisted yeah, instead yeah. of stuck and at least aligned mm -hmm. and the best is to not be stuck be aligned and be able to get behind well, the unity of all the other perspectives this is why there were so many churches right i mean church in in the you know, through history was a savior for for many people where it helped give guidance it helped give a way to align, right? Yeah. And there's it's it's a code, right? And so the church is one of them. You know, Bible is one of them. Judaism and the world religions are exactly just that. Um, where, you know, then then you've got the the uh, unfortunate um, issues that come up within the religion. You've got the you know, the Catholic priests molesting, you know, you've got all these other negative stuff that happen that sort of might mask, right? People's yeah. views of something that is beautiful. Supposed, it's supposed to be divine, yeah. You know, and yeah. it is a savior type yeah. of a setting. Um, and, but then again, that, that's where the objectivity has to kick in. You know, you realize that, you know, one bad apple, yes, can rot, you know, that uh, specific package maybe or that specific rack but it doesn't rot the whole foundation and the foundation is based on something solid right so you have to be able mm. to stay objective that that's what i what i continuously you know see and it comes up regularly is that again with the media with the with the with the self-actualization with the realignment <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we have a whole bunch of other points to get to in another conversation together. I mean, we have, this has been a very fascinating conversation that's been going in so many different directions. Oh, it's Paris. wonderful, I've, yeah, I yeah, love it. Thank you so, again, thanks for a, having me. I've had I a lot it. of fun going to all these different places together. May we um, ask you a couple of our questions on the way out? Sure. Uh, where do we come from into these earth suits on this planet? Do we come from somewhere beyond this 3D reality? Do we go back after we mm. die? How do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, you know, I, that, that is a question also that I've been trying to figure out. I'm not fully there with regard to reincarnation. I don't, you know, I'm not, I haven't adopted that. Um, There is, a, there is science, and I do, I do also look into science to have some kind of a proof. There is science that backs that there is, at the, at the time that the fetus is developed, at the very first stages, there's a spark of light, a spark of electric, electric light, or electric activity that goes on. And that, that, is, that is actually something that has been 
watched and, and has been proven to yeah. crawl across. So are we that? Mm. And, and that has been a question for me as well. When someone dies, when some animal dies, where does, where does that life go? Yeah. It had, that, that has been a question for me for many years. I remember many, many years, uh, more than 20 plus years. I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't know. Yeah, the spark of electrical activity in Inception is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. What, what's actually going on? Is that just the, is that just the heart um, beginning its pulsations, or is that uh, something deeper with maybe the, the essence of the being arriving? Or there's a, yeah some crazy stuff that could potentially but happen. There is a cycle. There's kind of a recycling, if you will, of us. You know, the body comes mm. from Earth, mm. goes back to, to Earth, Earth, right? Yeah. There is a recycling that is definitely going totally. on, and and, th and that is clear to me. And whether or not the me that's in me is part of that recycling, mm. right? Uh, when flower blooms, then it dies, then it goes. Where is where is the fragrance? Yeah. Um, are we the fragrance, right? The fragrance has, you know, it was here. We enjoyed it. We we can say yes. I, it was present, right? But then it sort of joins the collective, right? Because now you can't go ahead and get, gather all that es uh, sense, right? Mm. Uh, essence back and, and put it back inside the flower, right? Mm. It's, it's already expanded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are we that? Yeah. Right? And that, that would be something more along the lines of what I would perceive it to be. Um, but I do, st given that, I don't feel that we should go around hurting each other, that we're anything less, that just because maybe we recycle, you know, and that we come from Earth and we go back to Earth, then that gives us the, you know, carte blanche to, you know, to, to imprison, you know, thousands and, and millions and commit genocide and, I mean, all kinds of, you know, horrible things that go around the world, you know, drive-by shootings and, you know, mass, it, that, you know, it doesn't give us the right to to take away life from someone else, right? Yeah. And that, that is a huge question, and yeah. yeah. You started addressing this in, earlier in the show. Are we in a simulation? Yeah, why do you ask? She, she answered that. Yeah. Why do you ask her again? She gave us a very, she answered that. For those that are ignorant like myself. Oh, well, why don't you pay attention to your guests? <laughs> what, was, what, 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 what was the answer? Yeah, I feel that there, we are in a simulation at, to a certain degree. She, she was talking about free will. Yeah. She, her, her opinion is the same as mine. And if it's a little bit of a simulation, we still have to play the game. Yeah. We do have... We have to play it like a game. Definitely. We are part of the simulation. Yeah. You either succumb to it and let it rip you to pieces, eat you up and spill, spit you out, <laughs> or, yeah. She, she, uh, well, pay you, attention. Well, you, you have to, to be in a way because, you know, we are code, right? Behind all of this stuff is a code. You know, there is that it's clear, whether it's a flower, Fibonacci, the whole universe, the whole... Definitely uh, been seeing that, seeing yeah, it that way. There's all now. kinds of, you know, there's definitely code behind all this. But does that mean that, but I still have to choose, you know, I still have to choose A, B... You still collapse the futures, you, you, you but, still choose? But, I, but see, when somebody is not in congruence, when someone is out of whack, then... They are living in simulation, but they are not in unity with it. See, okay. to be in unity with with our our our, our environment, I'm just going to call it, call it yeah, environment, yeah. right? Is an incredible gift. And it's not a bad thing. It's an incredible gift because it's kind of like launch. When you want to launch a spaceship into space, you have to have a rocket, and you have to have a man or a woman people in that rocket, right, that take you to outer space to experience that. You have to have that rocket. The rocket is our body. We have to have our alignment, right? If we're out of back, whack, we won't be able to go anywhere. Anywhere. We won't blossom like a flower, yeah. No. So it's so, the congruence, you know, with the experience that we're all in right now, yeah. 
you, you've got to align yourself. And those who don't are the ones that unfortunately lose it, and, you know, or miss out. Not lose, but miss out. On their full potential. On the full potential, yeah. exactly. And then what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Free will. It has to be free will for me. I've gone through so many numerous experiences in my life where I've had that as a threat to be taken away, whether it was through marriage or through dogma, through um, you know, religion, so on and so forth. I'm so grateful that, that I have that free will, that I have that objectivity inside me that can save me. Damn, what a way to look at, at these norms that, yeah, that if, yeah, if, we, if, we, if we're not vigilant with our own um, sovereignty, then we can gain, uh, forces can come in and take it away. And yeah, that's applicable to dogmas, to marriages, to these devices and the ways they manipulate us, the way that sometimes um, a physician or a pharmaceutical or so many, yeah. Hijacked. Hijacked. Get hijacked, yeah. And a lot of people walking, but are they really there? Right? Damn. Yeah, we've, we've, we've talked about that on the show. That one's scary. That <laughs> one's really scary. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, but like, uh, how do you, but how do you know that I'm really here? Well, I can see you. I can also sense you. There's, when you get into more clairvoyance, you can actually see people's colors, their auras. And what do you see about my aura? <laughs> I didn't say I am there. <laughs> no, I, I will tell you this. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. Yeah. I respect that. But the point is that I, I actually was able to see those things at one point, And I thought the world, I was so excited, so, so incredible. But what I did not realize, you can lose it. Oh, that's, that's intense, yeah. Yeah, it, it's okay. a practice that you have to continue to develop. And if you don't, continue to practice it and and there's so many different levels of um clarity cleanse cleansing and, yeah. and toxicity that goes on in the body and in the environment so if if, if any of those are, are again out of whack then you lose the, the perspective of uh and the abilities it's kind of like uh like a sixth sense right um so yeah. So then it would be like, what level of alignment is your aura? Like, are you on absolute fire with divine connection to all that is and your purpose? Well, or are you like a little tiny flame or... Well, or, aura yeah. is, is this is energy field yeah. that every single one of us have. Yeah. And the aura is complete when it is full, right, around the body and it has different layers and different colors. The, an energy field that has been compromised has holes. You know, some people feel, well, I can't c get fulfilled. You know, they continuously do things and try to, right? And a lot of people uh, go to yeah. eating, right? Yeah. They eat a lot of food because they want to feel life. They want to feel alive or for whatever reason, they are, they're feeling empty. Well, it's not the food. There's, there's something you know, going on with the aura. There's a break, there's some kind of a hole that's taking away all the energy. You know, so in order to replenish, you've got to go back to exercising, you've got to go back to having a healthy diet, yes. you've got to go back to having a you know, healthy sleep. Nature connection. Nature <sighs> connection, hug some trees, make sure your friends around you, you know, our friends are really important, our friends, family. Yes, yes, right? yes those that are huge. You're yeah, receiving yeah, yeah. the input that is uh, positive for you to, to, to replenish. That's beautifully said. What a great end, yeah. Some indigenous people call that spiritual fragmentation that's there. Yes. And then, yeah, and then we fill the void or the void gets filled with malevolent forces um, that take us away from all of those things you listed. Sleep, exercise, nutrition, family, friends, community, divine purpose. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Super excited for another conversation. <laughs> Can that you was... not yell like that, please? Wow. Yeah. Super <laughs> excited Thanks. for another conversation. <laughs> Paris, thank you so much. For I love being here. You. Thank you so much for having me. Love having you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Appreciate you a lot.
That was so good. Thank you, Paris. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the con comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Have more conversations with your friends, family, coworkers, people online on social media about things like empowerment, clarity, and all these other subjects that we talked about in this episode. Huge shout out to Ron Vargas for producing and directing. Thank you very much, Ronnie. And also, check out the links in the bio to Paris's work. Do check those out and follow up with her if you'd like. And also, support the artists, entrepreneurs, the organizations, the spiritual leaders around the world that you believe in. Support simulation, help us grow. Our links are below Patreon, cryptocurrency, PayPal, design cool merch and get paid, all that good stuff's down there. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Peace.